This episode of Lifehacker is brought to you by Netflix. Go to www.netflix.com slash lifehacker for a free trial. Welcome to Lifehacker. Today is all about alternative uses for your stuff. We're going to fix a hard drive with a freezer. We're going to make a car dock for your smartphone out of a binder clip. Going to make a case for your tablet or phone from a notebook. We'll turn your iPod Touch into an iPhone. We're going to open beer with a few different things. <laughs> We're going to use your old router to extend your Wi-Fi signal, and of course, the downloads of the day. So let's get going. If you've ever had a hard drive fail, you know how devastating it can be, but Whitson here has a trick to maybe help you out. I do. Um, if you have a hard drive fail on you, it's pretty bad, especially if you don't have a backup. But fortunately, you can try just sticking it in the freezer for about 12 hours, and when you take it back out, you may find that you can boot back up and get some of your data off. Uh, it may only work for a few minutes, so you may have to use this trick a few times to get all the important data that you need, but it's a nice last resort. So what's the science behind this? I have no idea. <laughs> Binder clips are the duct tape of office supplies. He has kind of an obsession with binder clips, but he's also found a really good way to take a binder clip and turn it into a smartphone car dock, and we can do that with uh, binder clips and yarn, yarn and a pair of pliers. So it's actually really easy to do. Here's how. So the first thing you're gonna do is bend in the corners uh, of the handles for your binder clip. Yeah, that's going. It just takes a little bit of doing. Yeah, that's what he's doing, and I'm terrible. You gotta get it quite a bit. It's like, because this is what holds in the smartphone from flying out when you're driving around and making those crazy turns and swerving to avoid drunk drivers and everything. Once you get your bending done, you can do a little better than that, but you get the idea. Yeah, once you got it like this, you have to line this up so it's not these hard metal edges. And you can do that with yarn or whatever. Uh, any kind of string-like thing. And you just start on one end of them and tie it around. And you can make a nice long tie. And you can do it anywhere on the clip because it's just gonna slide around, so. And then just start looping it through around the edge of the binder clip. And you just keep doing this for a while. And you'll start to see that there's a little bit of uh, a wrap coming around. And so you gotta do this for the entire clip. And it can take some time. So we're going to go take a look at the final product of the Binder Clip uh, smartphone dock. I've got one here in my car. So here we are in my car, and this is the finished product. As you can see, I've added a rubber band to it for that reverse uh, pressure on the binder clip there. And you just add it to the car by putting it on the uh, vent of your air conditioning thing and you can uh, open it up like this but if you find that it's a little too constrained uh, the actual fin on the air vent is the best thing you can use because it sticks out a little bit more and then you can open it up wider and put your smartphone in there that will keep your smartphone in the car and keep your uh, phone easily accessible and out of the way it's a really great way to make a smartphone dock out of a binder clip on the cheap you can make a pretty cool case for your cell phone or more likely your tablet out of a notebook and basically creating a secret hollow in that book that you can carry it around with. So in this case, I'm going to use a moleskin tablet or as it's technically apparently pronounced, moleskina, uh, an X-Acto knife, some glue, and of course, in this case, my phone. Uh, so I've already went ahead and I did the gluing. I started off using a page-by-page -page method that was crappy before I found the PVA glue, which is actually made specifically for bookbinding. And essentially I took it and I did this already and I clamped down the sides and you can take something like a styrofoam brush or uh, even a Q-tip and just sort of apply it to the outside with the pages clamped together and it creates a pretty strong, nice glued edge. So once you've done that, it's time to mark your cut. 
which I'm going to do with my phone right now. And then it's time to start cutting. This is a bit of a tedious process. Just a little bit at a time. You don't want to go down too hard or you're going to start shredding a little bit like I'm doing now. Okay, so your finished product is going to look something like this. So grab your phone or your tablet if you've got a bigger notebook. Pop it in. And voila! Now a short intermission, so you'll have time to make your selection before the show begins. What about Netflix? Netflix is the world's largest subscription service that sends you DVDs by mail and streams TV episodes and movies over the internet. Members can instantly watch thousands of titles on a ton of devices, including the Xbox 360, Nintendo Wii, and PS3. For one low monthly price, you can instantly watch as many movies as you want without ever having to worry about late fees or due dates. As a new member and a Lifehacker viewer, you can get a free trial membership by going to netflix.com slash lifehacker and signing up right now. You'll be supporting the show and opening yourself up to a vast library of quality entertainment. It's showtime. If you don't want to pay the exorbitant amount of money it costs to own an iPhone and still want to be able to use an Apple device for your calls, you can do that by taking an iPod Touch and some sort of internet access and turning it into an iPhone. There are plenty of VoIP apps like Skype and also uh, Line 2 is another good one where you can get a phone number on your iPod Touch and talk over Wi-Fi. So that's great if you uh, just want to use it as a home phone and it's really good and the call quality is great and it's reliable. But if you're uh, you know, using it on the go, you can also pick up something like the Verizon MiFi or a Sprint Overdrive if you want 4G service and then you just turn that on, it gives you Wi-Fi access and you can make calls from anywhere that you have cellular data. Now this costs quite a bit of money um, in terms of uh, uh, data plans. You're still going to be paying like $25 or $35 um, or even as much as $60 for close to unlimited data but it's still cheaper than actually paying for a voice plan. So if you want to go this route, you can. It is an easier way to get your calls on an iPod Touch rather than having to deal with all the contractual BS that you run into when you're uh, using a regular cell phone. So if you'd like to learn more about this option and uh, more of the details on how to actually turn your iPod Touch into an iPhone, you can go on Lifehacker and check out the page that you see on your screen. You've probably seen someone open a beer bottle or other bottle of soda uh, with a lighter or say at the against the edge of a counter by sort of placing it there and kind of hitting down. Um, we've heard that you can open it with a piece of paper. However, I've tried the piece of paper and I've never been able to get it to work. So uh, the other way we've heard is you can use a piece of paper along with some sort of coin. Uh, I've got a quarter here and so that I'm going to try. So essentially you gotta fold up your piece of paper. You're gonna use this as sort of a holder for your quarter, which you'll use as a lever of sorts. Fold it a bunch of times. I think that this seems like it could be good. You're gonna tuck your quarter into it. You wanna kinda get the quarter up under the lip of the beer bottle and kind of apply your pressure up not so much into it, but mostly up. Sometimes it helps to move it around a little because I've sort of got this side open. And there you go. You were extremely desperate for a beer and you got it open. Congratulations. Hi, Life Hacker. I have just um, gotten a new router and I don't want to throw out the other one. Can you tell me what I could do with the old one? If you're upgrading your home wireless system or you've already made the jump, don't throw out your old router just yet. With some free software and a few sudden changes, you can use your old router as a kind of satellite to extend the range of your Wi-Fi and never have another dead spot in your house again. What is a repeater? It's the second router that focuses on picking up the signal your first router is putting out, then rebroadcasting it into new locations. It's like two guys with megaphones and really good hearing, standing about 500 yards apart. First off, make sure your new router works fine as the primary Wi-Fi spot. If it does, it's time to take out the old router. Grab an Ethernet cable and plug it into one of the numbered slots on the old router. Plug the other end into a reliable computer. Head to your router's setup page. Usually reach by heading to a certain address in your browser, like 192.168.1.1. Look around a bit. 
you might actually find the option to set the router as a repeater, so then this tutorial is pretty short. But if not, you'll want to install DDWRT on that older router to give it new powers. It's a free download. Head to dd-wrt.com and look for the router database link on the right. Enter in the name of your router and you'll likely see it come up. Click on it, then open up any tutorials or how-to guides it suggests, plus any files needed. Follow all the directions very explicitly, especially the suggestions on 30 second wait periods. Once you've installed DDWRT on your older router, it's fairly easy to set it up to mirror the signal from your first router. Give it the same password too, and your laptops and devices will never know the difference. Give your repeater a good spot in your house. One that's possibly on the second floor so you can eliminate most of the dead spots in your house. You got it, it's time for the downloads of the day. What downloads do we have for your repurposing needs? First, tiny Linux distributions. Here are a few flavors of Linux that you can run off a thumb drive to quickly turn any compatible computer into your Linux machine. Next up is Android for iPhone. Yes, it is a version of Android that you can install on your iPhone. Lastly, we have our top 10 list of clever uses for thumb drives. This list includes free downloads that'll turn your thumb drive into a handy installer or even a pocket arcade. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you've squeezed a little bit more functionality out of your stuff. See you next time.